This is the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Thanks for staying with us this morning. Let's head straight to our second conversation where that's a plan, a proposed plan to have a uh, drug test. Now, and as the ruling or progressive party, APC sets to hold its presidential primaries on the 30th of May through the 31st, 2022. The chairman and the chief executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Buba Mauer, has written a letter to the chairman of all progressive Congress of the APC, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, requesting that the officials of the NDLEA be given access to conduct drugs integrity tests for politicians seeking political office in the country. The drug tests will be carried out in other political parties prior to their primaries. Now, according to the NDLEA, the drug test is necessary to ensure that politicians vested with important national office uh, do not use budgetary allocation to go to buy cocaine and other drugs instead of providing needed services for the masses. While some quarters say that the proposal might be due to previous charges of drug use among politicians, others are saying it might just have a political undertone. Now, in the early 90s, uh, the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, uh, was arrested and charged with trafficking of heroin and other hard drugs. Uh, this is according to the reports that's been made available uh, that, that happened in the United States. We have Leonard Ayogo, who is a legal practitioner. He joins the conversation this morning. It's good to have you join us. Thank you, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's get straight to it. I mean, what do you make of this development, drug tests for politicians, just prior to um, their primaries? Um, additionally to that uh, uh, intention, I would rather want to, I wish we can have what we call character tests for our politicians and our aspirants seeking different offices. When you say um, counter test, now, what do you mean by now, counter test? Uh, I'll, come back to, I'll come back to that. Oh, when okay. I say character test, no, no, uh, I'll come back to that. When you say um, there should be drug tests, you know, as a lawyer, I want to look at um, the legal provision, if any, that provides for such an intention. Because I really gone through the Electoral Act and the Nigerian Constitution, there's no clear provision that says that um, as students for political offices uh, will have to undergo um, drug tests. But you can also read into the meaning of qualifications, um, for someone vying for an office in Nigeria, or somebody who can be removed from office. Now, if you look at um, Section 188, 189 of the Constitution, um, um, as a model extant clause, if someone can be removed from office if um, he's mentally unstable, if he becomes sick, if he can no longer perform the duty of that office. But then, it's only a competent court of law uh, where through the medical um, angle that can satisfy somebody to be an unfit for an office. So that is one area that you can glean that, okay, if you are a drug addict, you are, you are no longer mentally fit to hold an office, you can be removed from office. But, you know, we are growing democracy. So if what we are um, saying as a country to get our electoral system to value our electoral system that we are introducing this drug test, good and fine. But the timing is a case. Now, how do you satisfy somebody to be a drug addict? You must take him through the, um, the medical um, test and all that. And for how long? Then, the person will also challenge the possibility of him challenging that medical test that was not conducted in a facility that, is, um, that he has confidence in and all that. So I, I think that uh, the timing at this moment Looking at the primaries already here, next month the political primaries will be conducted. It may be wrong, but the intention is well um, intended. But beyond that, we can... Um, okay, let me come back to what I mean by character test. You know, the, the constitution we have, we operate, is um, House on Lapuna. Some of the guests to office, I'm talking about the immunity clause now for the executive. And it behaves in, a, in such a way that uh, any reasonable man will question that is this man actually or this man or woman actually occupying this office uh, does not have 
um, a character deficiency, and you cannot question that because the person has immunity. You know, so now that's why I said the character test will come to play. It's in the moral angle now because there's no law that said um, actually a bad character of a governor, a deputy governor, a president, or a vice president can lead to its removal because the immunity. Clause. So it's a changing time. So the drug test, as, as it stands now, may not be working because of the time frame. And so we have to get a clear cut time frame because some people will be uh, due into it what you call a uh, political vendetta and all that. So we have to have a clear framework for, for it to work. I'm afraid as it stands now, it's very difficult for any aspirant to be disqualified based on the fact that uh, maybe he has failed drug tests because that, drug, that failure will be challenging court. Okay, fine. I understand the fact that you've talked about timing. Maybe if we can do it for this particular dispensation or this uh, primary, maybe in future we should consider that. But having said that, you, talk, you brought about the issue of uh, morality versus legality yet again. If the Constitution tells us that uh, you can only remove someone if uh, uh, he's uh, mentally unstable, if we look at it in another way, why not um, do this test, you know, to be certain that this person actually is fit, so you don't actually start going through the rigors of the court afterwards? I, I agree with you. That's why I said, for us to achieve this intention, this is a very laudable intention, because we should um, encourage drug addicts um, to find sensitive um, public offices, uh, political offices. And then, of course, remember that it's not just for politicians. Mm. Uh, political office holders. It should be for all structure of um, public service. Uh, because uh, if you look at the situation we find ourselves, it's actually very difficult for you to have a clear framework. Now, how do you satisfy somebody to be a drug addict? There must be medical examination. There must be history of uh, check and balances. You know that even in sports circle, uh, some athletes have failed um, doping tests. Not necessarily because um, they are taking some drugs, but some will argue, will argue that these drugs they took was for medical reasons, which uh, has constituted a violation and they are, uh, sometimes they are being punished unnecessarily. So that's why I said, so that will not model up the system and, um, and, and it leads to all manner of accusation. Let us have a clear template. I expected the respectable DG of NDLA to come out with a framework. Now, the drug test, what duration? Um, once, is it that once the medical test is conducted and, and you say that, okay, there's a doctor, that would that be the final uh, um, situation? Or the person can challenge such um, drug test for a higher test and confirmatory test and all that. So because if you just do one confirmation, one test and the person fails and say, that's it, you are disqualified. The person will have the right to have a second confirmation. Now, the situation is that let us have a clear framework. It's a laudable intention. But well, as I tell you, I think the timing uh, may not go away because the primaries are here already. So how you going to do that in, in such a, a short span? And then um, we can make it legal if it's this uh, intention of uh, of Nigerians to be put into the Electoral Act, which is the principal legislation governing elections in Nigeria. So we can amend our, our Electoral Act to include drug tests and all that. So if we do that, it will become very legal. Otherwise, as it stands like I can tell you, um, there will be whole, um, uh, there will be huge litigations coming out from this kind of uh, uh, intention. So, so now that you, now that we know that this, uh, this does not have any constitutional bag backing or there's no legality to the drug test that's been embarked on by the NDLEA, um, do you think that the party leadership would actually agree to having this test conducted? Because uh, that letter has been you know, written already. Do you see the party agreeing to it? And what happens if this um, aspirant or this person actually failed a drug test? Do you think that they will also be well, disqualified? That's, that's why I said, um, they... Hello? Yes, please. So the question is, do you see um, the political party? I'm I mean, that, uh, if you can hear me. Yes, please. Go ahead. Leonard, Leonard we can hear you. Hello? Leonard, we can okay. hear you. Fine. Um, maybe I didn't hear the other part of it because the network was a bit unstable. But I, I think no party will want to disagree with that. But I, I am more in, uh, concerned about the implementation of the intention. Because if you set, uh, 
We seem to be having a bit of, you know, a network connection uh, with our guests on the other side. As soon as we're able to resolve all of that, we we'll definitely have uh, Leonard uh, join the conversation. He's a legal practitioner. Um, so, but. Um, to you, Justin, now, what do you really make of all of this? I mean, it's a very sensitive issue. We cannot also take out the fact that um, you have this agency. They'll always say there's no smoke without fire. Mm -mm. And so the fact that you have this agency raising this concern, it, it shows that, you know, there's been use of drugs amongst politicians. Yes, and I agree it. with you. I think for them to have come up with this particular stance, uh, there maybe are some indications that uh, some political office holders, you know, uh, you know, they have failed, you know, somehow the test, or maybe there are issues or, or investigations going on about them. And uh, to avert that in public, uh, that's why the NDLEA boss is actually suggesting that. But Leonard mentioned um, some couple of points that he talked about timing and um, all of that. The, the, the premise, for instance, for the APC is about um, less than 30 days. So I don't know how that would work, you know, because if you ask all those who have um, bought their nomination forms uh, to go and do integrity, uh, drug integrity tests that uh, going back and forth before the elections and trying to bring all of that together, it might just uh, bring some sort of uh, you know, confusion for the um, And that's why he's mentioned that uh, moving ahead, I mean, it's going to be an interesting, mm. you know, pre-election year where you're going to see uh, litigations, litigations uh, there. you know, because a lot of persons will be dissatisfied mm -hmm. with what's going on. But uh, let's but just see how all really this want, I really want them to go through the test because we need to know the mental but, status but if of those we, who if, if we're going to concede that uh, this. Governing us, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. You're saying that it would be interesting to see that happen. Yes. Yeah, I would love to see that play out, really. Now, if we are very honest, mm. if, if there's a sincerity of peppers with all of this, because usually the argument would always be that we don't have any sincerity at the end of the day. So it feels like it probably might just be an agenda. Why have we not considered to, we understand how all of these arguments okay. could be. Why have we not considered making this part of our constitution? I mean, the constitutional review that's been going on. Mm -hmm. You also have the fact that the electoral law has come. We have been clamoring that the president should sign it. It's been signed and it was not part of it because you know that all of this is going to be some kind of argument. There's no legal backing to all of this. And so but the constitution, the law again. actually guides the action and behavior of mm -hmm. everyone. And so this is also, so, so the question will now be, What's the essence? Are we very sincere? Is this, do we really want this to happen or we're just going out and just chasing shadows? But other argument, I don't know if you've seen that, some people say that this have an, a political undertone. Mm -hmm. There might just be some persons who the system is trying to, you know, reject or eject. I mean, something. these are conspiracy theories, but mm -hmm. most times you find out those theories There's are becoming reality. Some of them. Yes, true. Do we still have Leonard online? All right, Leonard. Yes, I do. I'm, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Just wrap up your thoughts. Uh, we have uh, we are, we have a lack of um, s um, time to discuss this. So let's okay, just my, my thought is basically that um, when we have intention like this, it should be the time should be of essence. And of course, we can all, always develop our electoral system uh, by building in legislation that provides for a legal framework, so that it will not be under the the whims and caprices of any person who does not like a particular person, and that's okay. Oh, you'll fail a drug test, and that is it, and then you'll be disqualified. So, I uh, we can build into our electoral act, um, amend our electoral act, which is the principal legislation guiding elections, control of elections in Nigeria, so that you will not know that, oh, for you to aspire for any political office and or other positions in the country, you must, uh, you must have to pass a drug um, um, integrity test. So the piece of legislation will, will really help so that this, uh, this principle or suggestion will not be abused by a uh, political opponent. That is my fear. But then it is, um, uh, of, of course, there's a medical council that can handle this matter. If there's a proper time frame and there's a lot back in. All right. Uh, thank you so much, um, Leonard. Um, That's as much as we can take um, from you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts.
All right, uh, thank you, Leonard, for being part of the show. Leonard is a member of the Chatham House London. It's good to have you join us, and we look forward to sharing your thoughts as always. And that's the size of our conversation. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to YouTube channel with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko, and thanks for watching. And I'm Justin. After the thanks for being a part of the show. We'll return again uh, tomorrow, but just stand by for the news coming up top of the hour.